in verse number 21. The Bible says, And Enoch lived uh, sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years. And he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty five years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Let's pray right there. Lord, we thank you, God, for this passage of Scripture. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, tonight, for the saints of God tonight that's gathered out this way. And God, we pray most of all, if they be any lost in our presence, God, that you'd speak to them. And Lord, through your word, you would convict their hearts, show them their need of the Lord Jesus Christ and only him uh, for salvation tonight. It's his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for standing tonight. Uh, before we get on into the message, I'd like to, uh, to mention here and read the passages of Scripture that reference Enoch. Now, Enoch is one of those figures in the Bible. He seems he's almost like a, a mystery, as it, as it seems. You don't hear a lot about old Enoch, but let me tell you something. His testimony uh, left behind something that you and I can certainly look to. So we read here the first the uh, first mention of Enoch, and it tells of his uh, genealogy here in Genesis chapter number five, going all the way back to Adam, and leading up to the flood. And uh, he has a very special uh, introduction here, if you will, describing him. Uh, and also the, the the next reference that I find is in the book of Luke, and just briefly uh, mentioned, but. Uh, you talk about if there's anywhere in the Bible that is, a, is of a significant place, it's in the earthly genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wouldn't you consider that a pretty important uh, place in the Bible? And here in, in Luke chapter number uh, 3 and verse 37, uh, which, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of uh, Madaliel, which was the son of Canaan. Uh, and, and also in Hebrews chapter number 11, amen, what we consider the Hall of Faith chapter, we have old Enoch mentioned here in Hebrews 11 and verse 5, uh, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently uh, seek him. And also in the book of Jude, verse number 14, the Bible says, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And, and so here... Uh, in the Word of God, in a matter of probably less than two minutes, I have, I have read uh, all the accounts referencing to that I know of, and I, I believe that I, I looked up every one of them, the four references here that we have to Enoch in the Bible. You say, well, he must not be a very significant uh, character. He must not be of much significance if he's only mentioned uh, four times here. But friend, let me uh, beg to differ tonight. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, how many times he's mentioned in the Bible. Uh, his life is a significant life. Amen. It, it plays into the Word of God. It plays. He plays into the, the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. And friend, tonight I'd like to preach the message entitled, Walking with God. And, and I, I want to examine the life here uh, of Enoch. And as I begin to study this, I thought, well, maybe there's some others that walked with God. There are some others that lived after the, the fashion in which he did here. It says he walked with God twice there in Genesis chapter number 5. And it didn't take me very long to look over there in chapter number 6 and find the Bible says in verse 9, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in all his generations. And Noah walked with God. Amen. And so I, I begin to see a parallel here. And I begin to see that there's some typology also here and Enoch and Noah, and how that Enoch is a picture uh, of the church being delivered uh, from 
uh, the tribulation and how that God is going to rapture the church and how that he's going to deliver us and, and, and fully preserve us, amen, uh, from uh, that, that dreaded time. But we see Noah here as he uh, went into the ark and God shut him in. It's a type and picture of Israel being preserved through the tribulation. And, and so we see these two types here. But I like to, to deal primarily with Enoch and how that he walked with God. And I thought about this. I thought about how that Enoch walked with God and Noah walked with God. And we could probably uh, find others, and I know that we could of others that walked with God. Uh, these two in particular where it says that they specific, specifically walked with God. There's others, uh, uh, no doubt, that had fellowship with God that we could say they walked with God. Yeah. If, if Enoch and Noah uh, walked with God, it could stand to reason tonight, amen, that you and I could walk with God. Amen. 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 Uh, so, so just five little things here tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I see as I study this, I see that he didn't always walk with God. Look with me, if you will, uh, and we'll read our text here again in Genesis 5. And, and look in verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And so uh, he was 65 when he had Methuselah. Of course, Methuselah... Uh, is the oldest man recorded uh, living in the Bible, 969 years. But, but, but those first 65 years, we don't know uh, what that looked like, but it says that he walked with God those 300 years after, uh, after Methuselah was born. And, uh, and, and you know what? This is proof tonight that the, the Bible is such an honest book, amen? Uh, most other religious uh, texts, if you want to call the Bible a religious text, to me it's a, it's a living, breathing uh, a book, amen. But if you, want to, if you just want to, for a moment, classify it as a religious text, uh, uh, you think about the other religious texts today. If they're talking about their patriarch, if they're talking about uh, the leader or the, uh, or the leader of their faith, uh, amen, they're going to tend to leave out any faults and failures that that person has. And over time, they're going to polish and they're going to uh, build up that religious leader that they have and tend to enhance some of their best characteristics. And, and they're going to try to, uh, you know, maybe lay aside some of their faults and failures. Uh, but friend, let me tell you something. The Bible, amen, it doesn't leave out anything. Amen. You think about King David and how uh, that he is uh, such a, a person that we look up to in the Bible and how the, the Bible even says he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. In the very lineage of Christ. Amen. And so, uh, but we still see that the Bible, amen, didn't leave out anything, amen, concerning how that he failed and messed up. Amen. The Bible, uh, and that proves tonight that the Bible is a real text. It's a real and accurate text that we can rely on tonight. And I believe that uh, just as it tells of its hero's faults and failures, I believe here uh, that we can deduce by where it says that those first 65 years, uh, amen, we could just say, I believe that he's just like any of us, amen, uh, amen, we, we's nothing without God, amen. I believe Enoch, uh, if he could uh, stand here tonight and testify, he'd say he was nothing without him, amen. Uh, he couldn't do anything without God. But friend, there come a day that he walked with God. He didn't always walk with God. And I wrote this down. Not only was he a was not, but he was a used to be. Amen. Ain't you glad that there was a time in your life, amen, whenever you can say some things were put behind you and that you used to be. Amen. And, and where the Bible says, and such were some of you, uh, but you've been, uh, you've been washed, you've been sanctified, uh, you've been justified. Amen. I like that word justified, don't you? Amen. That word justified, it means to be declared righteous. It means that in the, the throne room of God and in, in, in God's uh, uh, righteousness, amen, God has declared in his courtroom, uh, amen, that you, you, it's just as if it, you had never sinned. He's declaring this one uh, is righteous. You say, well, how is he able to do that? Uh, amen. It's because, uh, amen, some 2,000 years ago, amen, Jesus Christ uh, uh, paid the penalty of sin. 
Amen. He paid the price for you and I. Amen. So that we could be declared righteous on his behalf. Uh, amen. And, and, and one, of, one of the things that uh, our faults today is, is, is we joke around uh, about how we forget in things, you know. Uh, we joke around how about how we can't remember, uh, amen, what we had for breakfast sometimes. But really, if you think about it, one of our faults is in our human nature is that there's some things we can't forget. Amen. amen? Yeah. We may not remember uh, what we had for breakfast, but we'll remember, and the devil will make sure, amen, that we remember some, uh, some sin that we did or some skeleton that's in the closet, uh, and he'll make sure to keep bringing it back and back again. But friend, let me tell you something in the courtroom of God, uh, amen, God doesn't forget. Uh, amen, forgetting is an uh, inability of ours. Uh, but friend, what does the Bible say? Uh, it says that he'll never remember them anymore. Uh, uh, God in his sovereignty uh, has chose to never remember our sins anymore. Uh, if they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, uh, if we've been made clean, uh, God chooses to never remember them uh, against us anymore. Amen. And so, just as Enoch was uh, was not, he was a used to be. I'm glad that God can put some things behind us, even though the devil try to bring it back against us. Amen. The Lord puts it behind us. Secondly, tonight there were many that walked before him. I don't believe that that he's the only one that walked with God. Of course, we can go all the way back to Adam. When Adam had sinned, God come walking in the cool of the day. I believe that Adam walked with God. I believe there's others that walk with God. And, uh, and, 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 and I would encourage you, this should be a good study for you, and I'm sure most of you have already seen this, but try to find you a, a chart uh, that, that outlines these Old Testament patriarchs. Just look up Old Testament patriarchs uh, before the flood. And you'll look this up and, and, and just look at those charts and make sure it lines up. It spells it out all right here in Genesis chapter number 5, all the way from Adam down to Noah. And you'll find that most of these men lived somewhere around uh, 900 years old back then. And so they lived for a long time and they was able to see many generations to come after them. One thing that I see in that is that they were able to to pass along knowledge. They were able to pass along things that happened. And we see in just a handful of men here, uh, we can have just uh, uh, two men. It, it, even if you look at, at Methuselah, uh, if you link Methuselah to, to Adam and, and you link those two together, uh, you go all the way from, uh, amen, the garden uh, uh, to the flood. And I, I wrote down this right here. Uh, Methuselah's life overlapped Adam's for 243 years and that of Shem by 98 years, thus forming a connection between the Garden of Eden and the post-flood world. Amen. Amen. You think about those generations of people that could have had the opportunity uh, to be able to talk to Adam, the man that was responsible that that that, uh, that was responsible for sinning and put, placing man in this uh, fallen condition in which he's in. We find that leading up to this in the times of Noah, Amen. It was uh, it was times uh, whenever man was digressing at a breakneck speed, Amen. Uh, man's heart was uh, evil continually at the times of Noah. And I find that uh, uh, we, we see that digression very quickly. Amen. Whenever Cain slew Abel, amen. The first murder in the Bible, amen, is the first uh, a two, two brothers that was born uh, unto this earth. We see how sin takes hold uh, uh, on man. And so we see uh, here, you, you think about this, you and I, we're blessed if we get to see maybe our great-grandfather. Yeah. Or you get to see three generations of fathers. I, I, I was able uh, to know and to, and to be pretty well acquainted and, and, and close to my great-grandfather on my dad's side. And, uh, and, and what a blessing that was to, to be able to link together all them years. And he was born in the early 1900s, if I remember right. And, and all those years linked together. And my grandmother uh, still living today. And, and you link all them years uh, together and the knowledge that's able to be passed down 
Amen. And, and, and if I'm right, I, I believe that they were able to pass that knowledge down and pass that, that wisdom down. And what I'm getting at is if, if, if Adam walked with God, I believe that he would have been able, amen, to, to tell what it was like, amen, uh, to what it was like in the garden and what it was like to live in the perfect uh, paradise uh, of God. Uh, uh, Adam was 622 years old when Enoch was born. So Adam lived another 308 years after Enoch was born. As a matter of fact, this is the biggest part of Enoch's life. He was translated. We don't say that he died. Amen. Amen. Enoch was translated. Amen. He didn't see death. We'll talk about that. Right. But it's 365 years and Enoch uh, was translated. And so for the biggest part of his life, uh, he, uh, uh, Enoch was around for, the, for that. And it was possible that they uh, were acquainted especially since Enoch was Adam's great, 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 great grandson. Ain't that something, amen? Ain't that something? That's, that's something to think about. Amen. And so maybe he had an awareness of, of what that was like. Amen. And so there were paths that he could have walked down that were familiar in his father's all the way uh, to Adam. You know, well, we tonight, we stand here. We, we may not have all those generations to look back to. We can't look uh, and, and sit down and talk with Adam. Amen. But God designed it so. Yes, we have a personal walk with God. But God designed the church for a reason. Amen. God designed it a reason so you and I as God's people, amen, can help one another. And let me tell you something tonight, friend. Amen. If you've been serving the Lord, amen, for a long time, you've got some wisdom, amen, shoot it my way. Amen. I need to know. Amen. I, I, need, to, I need to have that wisdom. I need to know those things. And, and if we're working together as a church as we should, I, amen, you're going to pass down those, uh, those times that you walk with God, those times uh, that you had those experiences. Uh, amen. And, and, uh, and, and tonight, friend, I'm not trying to blaze down no new trail. Amen. amen. I'm not trying to come up with some uh, uh, greater and better way or some new path to fight. I'm just wanting... And I hate to repeat, amen, I, I preached on it last Wednesday night, I believe, amen, those old paths. Amen. amen, I'm not blazing a new trail. Amen, I'm just going on what's worked before. Amen, I want to go the way that God wants us to go. And so thirdly tonight, I see that Enoch had his own personal walk with God. And there'll come a time, uh, friend, whenever the experiences of our forefathers, although they will help us and guide us along the way, amen, we're going to need something directly from God. I like to hear the stories and, the, and I can remember times whenever there were Holy Ghost meetings in the church house, amen, when people would get happy and people wasn't scared, amen, to holler amen and people wasn't scared, amen, amen, to just get up and testify and tell about what God had done. Amen. Or get excited about, amen, the preacher preaching on the blood or preaching on the cross or preaching on whatever it was. Uh, amen. I can remember when people, amen, get excited about God. Uh, amen. You want to find people excited today. You don't go to the church house. Uh, amen. You go down the ball game somewhere. Amen. God help us. And so there will come a time, friend. Amen. I, I'm glad. I like hearing about those meetings. Friend, I need some of those meetings for me. I need to experience some of those Holy Ghost meetings. Uh, amen. Whenever people get happy. Amen. And God, use the man of God. Uh, amen. I need, uh, uh, as it were, my own personal walk with God. Uh, as Enoch walked with God, I need my own walk with God. And, it, and this walk here, it speaks of a personal experience. I thought to illustrate this, I thought about the Queen of Sheba and how that she had heard about King Solomon. And she went to prove him with hard questions. And, and as I paraphrase tonight, as she came to, to King Solomon, what her findings were is what she had been told was true. 
But what she said was that the half had not even been told. In other words, there was nothing like experiencing it herself. Uh, she could have been told about it for years and years and years. Uh, amen. About the, the glory there in the kingdom. And about how uh, Solomon's wisdom was so great. Uh, but until she experienced it herself, uh, there was nothing that was going to ever amount to it. Uh, uh, there was nothing that would ever compare. Uh, and friend, let me tell you something tonight. Uh, amen. People can talk about uh, uh, walking with God and tell them the times they walk with God. Uh, but friend, until you experience yourself, uh, there'll be nothing compared to it. It's a personal walk. This walk that, that uh, Enoch had here, it is one that speaks of obedience. If you walk with somebody, you walk in agreement, amen? It's hard to walk with somebody you're fighting with, right? And it's hard to walk with somebody whenever you're going two different directions. Matter of fact, you're not walking together, you're walking away from each other. And so that's why it says here, an Enoch walk with God. And Enoch walked with God. Not God walked with Enoch. Amen. Amen. And Enoch walked with God. And in order to be, and Jason walked with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And Brother Ralph walked yeah. with God. Amen. Amen. It ought to be us walking with him. Yeah. Amen. It ought to be us following him. Yeah. And so it's a walk of obedience. It speaks of a uh, hearer of a testimony. Amen. He said, it, it says that he had, if you look there in Hebrews, amen, it talks about that he had this testimony uh, that he pleased God. Let me just read it there in, in Hebrews uh, in 11 and 5. By faith Enoch, when he was translated, that should not see death. And he was not found because God had translated him before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. This walk, it speaks of a good testimony. Amen. This testimony... Amen. A lot of people have a misconception about a testimony. They think if people like you, you've got a good testimony. Well, friend, that's not always the case. I'm not out to, to make man hate me or dislike me. I don't like it when people don't like me. Amen. I want people to like me, but friend, sometimes uh, uh, people's not going to like you just because no matter how good you are to them uh, or how good you try to be to them or how much you love them, uh, they're not going to like you. Amen. For one reason, because you love Jesus. Amen. The testimony here, the reason he had a good testimony is not because he pleased God, but because, but because he pleased men. But the reason he had a good testimony is because he pleased God. He had this testimony that he pleased God. In other words, he was always wanting to hear from God. He was wanting God's uh, direction. He was wanting God's guidance in his life. And, and you might be able to say, amen, the one that he was walking with, uh, amen, the one that, that he was uh, beside of, our, amen, had an influence on him. Amen. Let me just say this tonight. The people that you walk with are going to have an influence on you. You know, a lot of times we think about birds of a feather flock together, and we think about young people, and it is very, uh, uh, it's, it's under a microscope or, or very magnified when you're a young person, you know, and, and you're very susceptible to things when you're a young person. It really matters who you run with whenever you're young people. But it also applies to older people. Yeah. Amen. Grown-up people, older people. Amen. If you're running with the wrong crowd, amen, they'll have a negative influence uh, on your life. Amen. So uh, how could you go wrong uh, walking with God? How could you go wrong letting God have His influence? on your life. Amen. This walk speaks of a good testimony and we need to watch who we walk with. Amen. How are we going to do that? He said, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. You know, you know why He walked with God? He just believed God. He just, he just did like anybody else did before Him. He didn't do anything spectacular, special, I don't think. I, I think He just believed God. He believed what God said. You know, that's what God wants us to do tonight. Amen. I, I, you know, it would be wonderful if we could do something spectacular in our, in our own eyes. But friend, I believe what would be great if we could just believe the Lord. Amen. If we could take Him at His word. Amen. When, he's, when He tells us something, we believe it and we go with it and we believe. Amen. That God is going to help us. Amen. How did, how did Enoch 
uh, walk with God and how did he, uh, how did how was he able to please God? I thought about this. I thought the best way to walk with God is on your knees. Amen. In prayer. Amen. Because it says there in Hebrews 11, he said that, he said that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek them. I believe Enoch was a man that diligently sought the Lord. He wanted to please God. And here this walk, as we talk about tonight, it speaks of the grace of God. Amen. It's the grace of God. If we look here in Genesis chapter number 5 and in verse 22, the Bible says Enoch walked with God. And after he begat Methuselah 300 years, he begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. And so how can we see here from verse number 22 to verse 24 and 300 years in there Enoch is still walking with God how do you think that this is possible how do you think it's possible that this man that we don't know really a whole lot about and other than what we see here and in three other verses in the Bible uh, how can we uh, what, what can we deduce from him and how do we think that he was still walking with God after those 300 years uh, and, and we see him uh, mentioned in the Hall of Faith chapter in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter uh, number 11. Uh, friend, I believe that it was always the same. If you go all the way back to Adam, amen, whenever Adam sinned in the garden and, and man was in a fallen condition and, and amen, he had uh, sowed fig leaves yeah. together, uh, amen, and that was the type of his own righteousness, his own uh, ability, his own doings to try to cover up and, and make his sin right, uh, amen, and God come after him. Uh, and friend, what, what did God do? Did God uh, uh, send him right straight to hell? Uh, uh, no, he didn't do that. Uh, Amen. The Bible says, and God made coats of skins uh, and clothed them. Uh, amen. The innocent uh, uh, dying for the guilty. Amen. How, how do you think, uh, amen, that old Enoch here uh, was still walking with God after 300 years of serving him? Uh, amen. I believe it's just the same. Uh, amen. As his great grandson Noah, uh, uh, when the Bible says, and Noah uh, uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord, uh, I believe the reason he was able to still uh, uh, be walking with God after them 300 years. Uh, it's because of the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, if God helps us and God helps us to walk with him, you know how it'll be. It'll be the grace of God. Just like Enoch and Noah. Amen. And Adam, it was all the grace of God. Fourthly tonight, about walking with God. When he walked with God, he had a message. If you look there, uh, about Methuselah, they say Methuselah means when he dies, it shall come. Methuselah was 969 years. That was Enoch's son, Methuselah was. He was 969 years old when he died. And if you do the math and they say and they figure out there that that was the year the flood came. Hey Amen. Who do you think named Methuselah? Amen. I think that God used Enoch to name Methuselah. Amen. And give him the knowledge. Amen. That there was judgment coming. Amen. He had a message to tell that when he dies, it shall come. I believe that was talking about the flood. I believe that was talking about the judgment of God. Amen. You say, well, I don't know about that. Let me tell you something. Oh, Enoch, he was a prophet. Amen. He, he prophesied. Amen. He had a message uh, to tell. If you look here in the book of Jude. Amen. In verse 14, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly. Hey, friend, let me tell you something here tonight. Uh, amen. That picture of Jesus Christ ain't the, amen, ain't the time that he came and they placed the crown of thorns on his head. Uh, amen, friend. They're, they're uh, bickering and debating. Uh, amen, right now. Amen. Our country's splitting too. Amen. 50-50. Uh, amen. And let me tell you something tonight. When he comes, uh, he's not coming back to take sides. Uh, he's coming back to take over. Amen. Uh, thank God he's coming back. Uh, just as old Jude, uh, just as old Enoch prophesied Side, uh, amen. That is coming back with ten thousands of his saints uh, to execute judgment. Amen. He's not coming back as some sissy. Amen. 
He's not coming back as some long-haired hippie, amen, as they make him out to be in Hollywood. Uh, but, friend, he's coming back as King of Kings uh, and Lord of Lords. Uh, he's coming back to rule and to reign uh, uh, with a rod of iron, amen, and to execute judgment and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Oh, what a message uh, that he had. And we can certainly say today that the message shouldn't be changed in the midst of an unfolding world that was going on around old Enoch leading up to the days of Noah. Amen. He hadn't given in to a modernistic message that was the one of the tickling of the years. But friends, just as the Bible teaches us, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come uh, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers uh, having itching ears. Uh, uh, friend, if that time has ever come, uh, amen, it's come now. Amen, just look around. Amen, at the so-called preaching that's going on today. Right. Lastly and fifthly tonight, probably most importantly, you walk with God. Now this is deep. You may never catch this. You walk with God, you'll never die. Amen. You walk with God, you'll never die. Oh, friend, are you walking with God tonight? Do you know him in the free pardon of sin? Have you been born again? I see here a picture of the church being delivered from the tribulation, but I also see uh, the, 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 what's ahead for the saint. Uh, just as Enoch and Elijah were uh, very two unique characters in that they didn't have to see death, uh, very two unique characters in the Bible. Even Jesus Christ himself, uh, he experienced death, but he did that willingly, amen? And what was unique about Christ, though, is that he overcame death, right? Amen, he is overcoming of death. But Enoch and Elijah didn't have to see death. You say, well, is that the only crowd that won't have to see death? Well, the Bible talks our... Corinthians says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Amen. Just as Enoch and Elijah, uh, they didn't have to sleep. They didn't have to go by the way of the grave. There's still yet a group of people that won't have to go by the way of the grave. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. That group of people could very well include us tonight. Amen. That could include us. You see, that was the mystery of the, the church and the rapture. Uh, how that uh, John saw there in Revelation 4, he saw a door open in heaven. Uh, amen. And, and a voice coming down saying, Come up hither, amen. Yeah. One day we'll hear that voice, amen. Amen. If time goes on and we live long enough, I believe the time is swiftly approaching, don't you? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I see tonight that we're not appointed to wrath. He never did have to go by the way of the grave. If you walk with God, you'll never die. Amen. Are you walking with God tonight? Amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Miss Laura, would you come to the piano, please? I'd like to give you a time to come pray tonight. You know, we can talk about old... Enoch walking with God and talk about Noah. And I believe that we've got enough evidence here tonight to see that if they could walk with God, you and I could walk with God. Yep. Amen. And I, I wonder sometimes though that walk gets a little bit hindered. Sometimes that walk gets a little bit separated, if you will. And it's hard for you to have that communion and that time of fellowship with God that you need. You see, when you walk with somebody, uh, you can communicate easily with them. You can talk to them. 
Friend, when's the last time you had some of those times with God in your prayer closet? Whenever you walked real close to him, as she plays real softly tonight, does anyone need to come tonight and pray? 